It's the beginning of our full season at Telford United, and these are now my attributes. Having reached the Continental B license, we are studying the Continental A license right now. So I like to think that sooner rather than later, we'll be very highly regarded as a manager. And having managed 159 matches so far, we will reach 200 games in charge this season, regardless of what happens. That being said, we need to talk about a few things as well, just generally. Because while I've won no trophies, we're back up to £744,000 in the bank on the 1st of July. So that's a good sign. Two players have been released, though the board only want us to attempt to avoid relegation from the league, which doesn't bode well for our squad, which is very, very young at this point. So young, in fact, that we've only got two players over the age of 30 and just five players over the age of 19 in the squad. Yeah, this is a very young squad, and I didn't realize how young it was getting until I looked at this today. So, this could be a problem. I don't know how big of a problem it could be, but with the squad getting better and better over time, we should be good. Gibson is the highest paid player at this point, being paid £725 a week. That is still lower than what Walker and Kerr were being paid before they left the club. And in fact, we've only got a seven players being paid over 200 pounds at this point so we're making good progress so that's a good sign we do have a lot of players whose contracts are expiring this season i'm gonna literally drag this down to show you that there's 28 players 28 people whose contract expires and then you realize there's still a lot more people here how many other people are there all together 26 so we've got about 54 people at the club and we're not paying a lot of money in the wages because we're only paying about six grand a week in wages, which is quite good when you realize just how big of the squad we got at this point. That's including the first team and the under 18. So anything's possible. We've just got a lot of young people who are also not being paid a lot of money. So are we the bad guys at this point? I feel like we're the bad guys at this point because we're hauling so many people to the club. Projection is to go down to about 550. The nine thousand pounds so that is still making a profit of about 50 grand despite the fact we've already made ourselves go up to 700 plus thousand pounds in the bank balance so that's not including the cup competition runs and anything else so there's that as we look at the teams in our league this year with Bly Spars and Scumfort going up we've got a few teams coming down some we recognize Kenny Mr. Harris, Chorley and South Shield all have been promoted, I think, in recent times. I remember taking on South Shields and beating them or losing to them. We are expected to be in 15th place, but this is also before everyone makes their transfers and their loans, so we could be having a problem. I have a save idea in the future where I just do a journeyman, but I can't sign players over the age of 19 or something in the future, which could be an interesting challenge. And I think it could be a fun challenge in the future if we ever go down that route, but three teams that promoted, all in the relegation positions, so that's not surprising. But there's only three teams promoted this year because five or six teams were promoted to the south side of the division. So we are finding a few issues here. But either way, that's a thing. Also, the average age of the squad is now 20 and it's fairly determined. So is that a problem? Maybe. But Mitchell's also listed as a midfielder in our projected lineup. So they don't always get that decision correct but release players Fraser Kerr is gone apparently he's now considered a decent player for our division but he's also like a last resort so in my mind it makes sense to get rid of him he's also doesn't like big matches he's also 34 so I feel like I made the right call to get rid of him well Wimmy Walker just outright said I'm leaving you can't stop me and he just left so yeah 24 years of Asia now he's not gonna get much better he also does not like big matches I would have loved to have kept him because I feel like him as a deep line playmaker on defend is really useful. But at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. It could have been worse. But at least we got a few years out of him. Three years, in fact. And he signed for them in real life on a free transfer this year. So clearly, we did well to get the years out of him that we did. Hopefully, he gets a new club because I don't want him to rot away, do nothing. I would have paid him. £800 a week if I had the option to, but I didn't, so... I like the guy. I wish him well. I hope he has a good season at his new club, if he doesn't decide to retire. 
I did bring in some new staff members. Chris Cummings is our new scout. I didn't need a scout, but the background team were getting on my, my case about getting a new scout, so I just brought him in. £120 a week is not bad. Stephanie Mackin is our new under-18s physio. She's really good at the role, so it makes sense. And Donny Rossier is the under-18s goalkeeping coach, and I think he can improve. Yes, his determination is terrible, but I think if he improves over time with his coaching badges, we should get a better coach out of him. But there you go. Some people are getting better. I hope he better get better. Our start this year is, I think, difficult for Darlington FC United, but then we've got some difficult, easy-ish games. Last year, we picked up just one point in our first eight matches. I'm hoping that the 4-4-2 this year will do better than the 4-3-3 did, and we can have a good time. If we don't do well, then I don't know what I could do differently, honestly, but there you go. Hopefully, things go well. Either way, we're going to go back to the end of the Canada year to see what the youth intake preview is going to look like and just how good, potentially, our squad could be looking at. I'd like to think we've made some improvements in the terms of the players are just getting better and developing quite nicely. But that's the dream, isn't it? It always is. Last season, we had one of the worst starts I've ever experienced as a manager in Football Manager, picking up just one point in my first eight league matches. It was a start I was hoping we wouldn't repeat this year. And so far, we've not repeated it. In fact, we went on an unbeaten run that lasted until October, which was very, very promising. And we had a load of new goal scorers. So that's a promising, promising sign. As we go through this, we had a load of games that went our way. Lookman got his first ever goal in this game against Peterborough Sport, which was very nice indeed. In fact, we had just two late goals as well after a penalty, so that's good. Let's look at Lookman's first ever goal for us. It was from a free kick. And it was a very easy goal. He was just unmarked. Why was he unmarked so badly? I don't know, but I'm not complaining. We also won a game against Warrington, three goals to nil, where we had just one shot on target, and that shot on target was the 92nd minute goal by Lazarov. So we almost won a game, 2 nil, with no shots on target. We absolutely FM'd Warrington, and I could not have been happier. Mayele got his first two goals of the season from the penalty spot, and that was great. The fact he scored twice in this game from the penalty spot makes it even better. We were 3 1 up in this game and drew 3 3, so maybe I should be concerned. But they also had an extra 3.96, so maybe I should be happy we didn't lose by more. Kieran Barber got his first ever goal with this effort in off the bar from outside the area to make it 3 1. And to give us some daylight. And to just get his first of a goal. So, happy days. Another good win for us here against Altrincham. Shepard scored his first ever goal from this corner. In the FA Cup against Warrington Wyland. Walker, our other centre-back, took the corner. So, why our defender who is six foot four is taking corners? I don't know. Apparently, he's quite good at them. But being six foot four, you'd think he'd be better off being target for the corners but okay at least Shepard got his first ever goal for us there even if Warrington Rylands actually looked like the better team at times Dan Atkinson Dan Atkinson scored his first ever goal in this FA Cup tie a nice volley to make it 5-1 against Blythe Spartans in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round to take us to the first round of the FA Cup and so far to my knowledge I am checking this and making sure I'm getting this correct that was the last new goal scorer for us in our history, in our season so far. So we're going to go back to this view. And we're going to talk about our run of form because we enjoyed a very good start to the year. And winning four of our first six matches is a bigger contrast compared to last year where we picked up just one point in our first eight. So quite frankly, I'm happy with doing a lot better this year than we did last year. We had to go to a replay against Whitby Town in the FA Cup second qualifying round, but that's fine. We beat them anyway. We then beat Warrington Rylands. We then destroyed Blythe Spartans in the FA Cup before losing to Heaven and Waterlooville. A bit disappointing, but what can you do? We did also lose two games going into this. Three took us Marine, which I was a bit surprised we lost. And then three took us Newington, where we were 2 0 up. Because of course we did. I thought. Being 2-0 up meant that we are going to be fine. But then they scored three goals and got a 91st minute winner. So, 
they did deserve the win, honestly, but it was just a frustrating game to watch us blow a two-goal lead, especially when we looked so good. But then we went to November, we're really good, we've not lost a single game that month, and I was thinking, yes, we're going to be fine. We then lost to Oldham, 2-1 of the FA Trophy, so we're out of that now, and then lost 5-1 to SC United, having got in front inside the first minute. Tuzan had a horror show in this game, and it was 1-0 at halftime. Then we considered four goals in the last 25 minutes, and Rowan came on for the bench to get a brace of goals and an assist. He completely changed the game in their favour, and if you look at the match momentum, the worst part is they honestly didn't even deserve to win this game in that regard. They just create bad chances, and it just worked for them. But we had the momentum. It's just unfortunate our goalkeeper had a 5.9 rating. I should probably drop him for that performance, but he's also young. It's, it's his first really bad performance, so maybe I should give him another chance. That was our last league game before we met up. We're in fourth place, in fact. Our the biggest Newton kind of did hurt us because if we hadn't lost that game and we held on for the victory, we would be in second place. Because we're five points behind Newington. We're joint best goal us right now. And if we were good and we continue to prove we're good as we are, we say we are, that we're looking good. The fact that the FC United beat us after we beat them is a frustrating moment. But what can you do? I'm hoping that with 22 games left, by the time we get to the youth intake, we will be good and that we shouldn't have an issue. It's just a bit frustrating to see us blow a lead to this degree. But we also went unbeaten for so long that I'm actually not concerned. The fact we are so far clear of the relegation fight compared to last year is a blessing. And I feel better for it. And it's showing me that the 4-4-2 is still the formation to go with. I just need to stick with it and not do anything silly. We've had a youth intake preview. We've got a goalkeeper and two of the centre midfielders and a web midfielder coming through that we should be excited about. Fullback, centre back, strikers, apparently... Don't look good despite the fact they're C, so that could be wrong. Wingers, we don't really care so much about. DMs, attack midfielders and wingbacks, we don't use them. So honestly, not concerned that we're not getting into those. But that's the end of the day, not the end of the world. Also, I got my Continental A license and we're now starting for the Pro license. So that's almost done. And our attributes are looking good. And yes, we did get a job interview off her. And it's a big team too. One that I was not expecting. Surprisingly... Kill Marlock of all teams came to me and offered me a job interview. I didn't know what to think about that because we're not going to go to them anyway. But the fact they offered me a job interview was fun. And it gave me an idea that maybe, just maybe, we could do some good things. They're also Europe. They were Europe and offered me a job interview. As a sixth tier manager in England, either something's gone wrong that they need to appoint me or at least approach me for an opportunity... Because they literally finished in seventh in the Conference League league phase. Why did they need to come to me? I guess I'm flattered, but at the same time, it's a bit weird that a Scottish Premiership side has come to an English sixth tier manager. I guess my reputation is now like a two star reputation anyway, but even so, a bit of a shock to get a Scottish Premiership side come to me in the first place. But whatever, I'm not complaining. Also, they got like £8 million in the bank. So the fact that I got approached by this team makes it all the more bizarre to me. They also won the Scottish Cup last year. So the fact they've literally sat their manager or they lost their manager. No, he left them. Okay, he left them to go to Hearts. Why did you go to Hearts? I'm so confused. He won the Scottish Cup two months after being appointed as manager and then left them for Hearts, who I'm fourth. What happened here? Their manager left. He left for Wolves. So literally Wolves caused this. Wolves caused this mayhem to happen because they set their manager. They were in a championship. So they set their manager. Urs Fischer. Yeah, okay. This guy is being sacked. It's the reason why Kilmer approached me for a job interview offer. All right, fair enough. I'm just a bit surprised, but fine. I guess we got something to talk about now in that regards. It's just a bit weird. Just saying. I am one of the four managers with a two-star reputation at this point. And LaFonda's also got a two-star reputation as well, so that's fun. But yeah, we got a two-star reputation along with Danny Welbeck of Tamworth, 
Ian Coverhouse of Kirsten Ashton, and Ad LaFondra of Arvington Town. Because, of course, these are the managers in this division. The face got a B license. It's actually fun to me. But it's just a bit weird that I'm in the same division as managing, the same division as some of these former players. Two of them, big names as well. Going to be honest with you, I don't know who this guy is, but I've seen him around before. I feel like I recognise his name, but I've never seen... He was definitely a big player, though. He's played a lot. He was playing the Premier League. Was he playing the Prem for Norwich City? I've got to check this out now. Yeah, he's definitely a big name. Good Lord, okay. Former Premier League player for Norwich who helped them get third place, if I recall correctly. So, yeah, they finished in third around the time he was playing. So, fair enough. He was a big name. I just did not recognise him. Yeah, the fact that, that that's the best of a league finish and he was part of it. Tells me how good of a player he was back in his day. Either way, those are the managers in the league right now. We're looking good. We've also got £1.1 million pounds in the bank effectively at this point. So we're looking good here. We're spending just six grand a week on wages. I would not be surprised if I can get a facility upgrade or they decide to go professional. The fans love me. The board love me. So I'm a legend for life at the moment because we're only expected to attempt to have a relegation for this division. And yet we're fighting for a player position, so who knows? We could do good, good things. So, let's see what the youth intake is like and where we are in the league by the time the youth intake hits in three months' time. Let's see what that's like now. It's now the 29th of March. We've just hit our youth intake day, and since I last left you, and since we started playing more and more games, our form's been a bit hit and miss. January was a bit hit and miss. We only got four points in five matches. In February, we picked up six points in five matches. Last month that we just had, we only won two games, but we did at least pick up eight points in five matches. So it wasn't a complete disaster. The 4-4-2, while good, is now being figured out and other teams are starting to approach us differently. Despite the fact our players are not as good as they sh want to be. We are predicted to be in 23rd place right now. But we've had a load of new scores. And it's a very promising sign that I can now say more players are scoring for us in this moment in time. Including a player I didn't think would ever score for me. A result of injuries and suspensions, Freddie Benson found himself on the pitch and for the first time scored a goal. It was very fortuitous, but it was a goal that got us to equalising goal. In a 3-2 victory against Southport, where we were 2-0 down at half time. So to get a 3-2 victory helped by a debuting goal from Freddie Benson was very promising indeed and he was the player of the match the other player to score his first ever goal was Nathan Sadler I brought him up recently Simon another player that was barely making his debut today also got an assist so Sadler and Simon combining to get us the winning goal Sadler also got the player of the match award a very good performance and a very good situation it helped us get all three points against Chorley. But hopefully, sooner rather than later, we will start to get better and better. We do need to pick up the pace a little bit and hope we do better. Because despite our bad run of form as of late, we're still in fifth place. The title is no longer within reach. We've blown that away completely. But we are still in a fight for a player position. And that's good. It just means that we're trying to do better. But we're also in a fight to try and bottle the player position harder than anyone else because between ourselves, Tamworth, Alfredton, Marine and Altrincham, we've been blown away our confidence, our good fortune, our goodwill and even Chester have now started to come into the fight and actually just take over even if they lost their last match and we went above them. So no one between 4th and 9th are in good form it feels like and maybe just maybe we're very lucky. Also, yes, there's a player with 37 goals already. I don't know how he's doing it because he doesn't look that good. Maybe it's the fact he's six foot five and has a player trait of place shots, but who knows? It may be one of those things. He's also got an extra 24, so he's overperforming that. And he's got 50 goal contributions in 46 matches. The guy is insane. But I got given this. Then this was promising to say the least. We had a player that had two and a half style current ability off the bat. But were these players players with good personalities? Yes. I'm going to say it to him now. 
Despite some bad personalities, this is a much better intake, and it looks like we have a good intake here. Sean Evers is one of two goalkeepers with five-star potential ability. He's just extremely inconsistent, and that's an absolute shame. He's got a bad personality, but his determination could do us a work, as could a load of his other attributes. But he's also only 15, and he's also 5 for 10, so hopefully he can go taller. Paddy Smith is a striker who's an advanced forward, and that's good. Another striker to our collection. First touch of 14, finishing of 12, acceleration of pace in the 12 and 13s, and his physical attributes are quite good if you take away his strength. Ignore the strength, he's great in the physical attributes. But looking at him, he could be really, really good. But perhaps the player I'm the most excited about is Emmanuel Tavares. He's inconsistent, yes, but he's already two and a half star current ability. He's got a spirited personality, which is already great. And he likes to come deep to get the ball. And as a deep line playmaker who can play in both the center of the field and the DM positions, that is wonderful. He's also got 11 crossing and can play as a left winger, as an advanced playmaker. I don't plan on using him out there. He's definitely a deep line playmaker and defend for me. He just fits the role perfectly. He definitely could do some work. The fact he's got the Angola, Portugal and England nationalities is useful. It also means he's probably going to get called up by Angola at some point in the under 21s or above. Who knows? But he's really useful and I'm happy he's here. The other player who could play in the cinema field and DM positions is Jordan Garzi. And I'm just going to say here now, he's really good. I think he could play a playmaker position quite nicely. Is he perfect? No, no, he's not. But he could play that quite nicely. He could play the Mazzala role if I really was desperate for him to do so. He's got a lot of good mental attributes that I'm really excited about. So that could be promising. How I want to use him is questionable but he's got low determination so hopefully he can improve on his personality philip o'connor is the second goalkeeper with five star potential ability which is kind of bizarre that i've got two and one intake but i'm not complaining he's also inconsistent though so maybe we need to work on that he's also five for 11 but at least he's got a light-hearted personality jack williams is a six foot defender with 19 teamwork and 14 tackling don't know why I decided to emphasize the fact he's got 19 teamwork at all, but at least it's a attribute that we can use, maybe? Actually, it just means he's willing to follow instructions while working for and alongside his teammates, so that's good at least. I'm happy he's doing well. He's a left footer center back though, so that means we can use him on the left hand side and it wouldn't be an issue. The fact he's not got the best jumping reach or heading is not ideal, but he can definitely improve on that. He's also only six foot. He needs to work on a few things, but he could be useful. Fraser Hibbert is a left back. He's a left back. He's not a winger. He's not an attacking winger. He's got free marking and free crossing. I like to think that I'm just having an issue. I don't know what to do with this guy. Do I play him as a winger? Do I play him as a fullback? He's consistent at least. But what the hell do I do with this guy? At least I know what to do with Michael Hobbs. He's, he's easily a winger, so... That's one less thing to worry about. The fact he's got better tack. I swear, if he's got better tackling than the other guy, I'm concerned. Hold on. He does. Oh my god, he's got one tackling. Okay, this is bizarre. Ryan Shepard is a midfielder who could play as a winger and a DM. He's a playmaker, though. He's definitely a playmaker. He's absolutely a playmaker in his best attributes. Okay, we've got a few playmakers in this intake, and that's promising. He's inconsistent, though. So, that's annoying. Miles, oh, Miles Wellham is going to be a problem. Inconsistent, straight off the bat, and plays further forward in his two winger positions. He can play further back, which is fine, but he's going to need to do a lot of work to improve because his mental attributes are bad. He is determined, fairly determined, though we need to work on a few things here. This is going to be a problem, isn't it? He likes to knock the ball past his opponents, but his off-the-ball ability and his passing are terrible, so... That's going to let him down. And then we got Hayden Tyford, who is a center back and a right back. Definitely a center back, though. Six foot four. Six foot four. 12 jumping reach. 12 positioning. Just not very good at heading the ball. He had almost everything I wanted. He's also got 10 tackling, so he's, he's actually useful. He's actually going to be useful. If he wasn't so inconsistent and didn't have so many issues, 
we would be looking at a very good player here. We've also got Caden Garcia, who's got both English and Gibraltar nationalities, which is interesting. Physically, actually really good. I like him as a physical player. Is he a player that we can rely upon? No idea. He needs a lot of work, and I don't know how to really get the best out of this guy. Fairly professional though, so at least he's got that going for him. He will definitely improve. And Sam Dainty is the last person I'm probably going to be signing. He's a casual personality. I might not. I actually might just drop him for that. That actually might be the reason I don't sign this guy. How have you got 14 leadership and a casual personality? No. No, I'm not signing this. If they sign... The only reason I'll sign this guy is if he wants a youth contract and nothing more. And we could just mentor the casual personality out of him. I refuse to have another casual personality player at the club. I refuse it. Okay, that's a thing. We've got three players at the bottom that I'm probably not going to sign for obvious reasons. So we're going to go forward to the end of the season and see if we're still in the playoffs. If we're in the playoffs, we play the first game. If we're not, then we just end the season there. Either way, I'll see you guys in a bit. So we are back, and despite winning the next two games and qualifying for the playoffs, we lost 5 0 against Gainsborough Trinity and drew 1 0 against Bamber Bridge. The 5 of the three against Gainsborough, I still don't know what the hell happened to here and why we capitulated the way we did, but I did rotate the squad a little bit to be fair, but I didn't think it would be this much of a drumming against a team in our division. And some of the players that were on the pitch should have done a lot better. But clearly, I don't know what I'm doing here. To lose 5 0 to a team that's been relegated was not ideal. But at the end of the day, we didn't really need to worry so much. Even if we did draw against Bamber Bridge by 1 0, we should have won this game. But we didn't. The XG kind of tells you we were the better team. We just, for some reason, didn't take our chances. Their goalkeeper did quite well for himself, but... Still, we're finishing fifth place. Tamworth have just lost to Altrincham, who almost lost out on the playoff position. Chester did miss out because Marine did win. And if we had beaten Bamber Bridge and games with Trinity, we would have got fourth place. Hell, even a win against Bamber Bridge should have been what we got, and we should have got to that place anyway, but we didn't, and it is what it is. It's our best of a league finish, to be fair. But I feel like it could have been better if we just not capitulated in the last two games of the year. Picking up just one point in two games against relegated teams. That should be guaranteed six points, but it wasn't. Mind you, doesn't change the fact we're 21 points off top of the table in Newington and 19 points off second place Kings Lynn. But either way, we are taking on Hameen today. And I'm hoping we do well because... I have not got a good record against the team in recent times, as I'm about to show you here. We're going to go to previous meetings. And yes, last two games, we lost against them. The fact we've had four wins each in eight matches, and we both scored 17 goals against each other, tells you it's very competitive. And it also tells you that we've conceded six times and scored three in the last two matches. But what can you do? Hopefully... We don't have a repeat of these two performances in the next game. And then we actually do well. Either way, we should do well. They want me to rotate again. Almost as if they're telling me, yeah, you're not going to do well, but we're going to see what we could do here. And this is the thing. I don't want to rotate, but I am going to bring Tavares in to the first team because he is the better playmaker than Vimmer, who is on the bench. Mayele also starts up front he's actually the best advanced forward now despite the fact his personality is still low self-belief he's also got 13 goals so clearly his personality is not holding him back terribly he's got a 6.8 free average rating mind you but he's also only 16 so he can definitely grow as a player and do better and better things his finishing and composure are definitely helping him now if he was physically better i'll be delighted I have given him 22 stars and I've also won him from the bench 22 times. So it's not like he's just been a first team regular. I've had to integrate him slowly, but surely. But there we go. But if we look at some of the players we got going into this game, Tuzan is now unambitious. I don't believe he was before. So the fact that he's now become unambitious is a bit of a concern. But it's getting better and better. He's actually more of a sweeper keeper than a goalkeeper, which I should be concerned about. But at the same time, maybe I'm not. He's definitely improving there as a goalkeeper, though. He's also only 16. 
Atkinson has also improved, though you wouldn't notice it with the down hours here. He's also only 16. Yeah, he's probably the weakness out of all the team right now because of how bad he is in his consistency. But if he can just turn up for these games, that's great. Henley's probably one of those players that I will need to replace soon. He's 32 years of age. His contract expires at the end of the season. I can extend his contract by another year. But the question is, do I want to? Probably because he's actually been our best defender, ironically enough, with a 6.9 average rating. Piggott has not been as great, but he's also a 5 foot 11 centre back who likes to bring the ball out defence. And I don't think he's good enough for that, but it is what it is. He's also only a decent player for the division, so that's where weakness lies, I think. The quality of the squad is just not very good. Kieran James is our best player. He's a good player for the division. He's also only been paid £120 a week. I can extend his contract if I try to give him the contract right now. He feels that the score's not good enough, which, fair enough, it probably isn't. But you're also only 18, and I can just extend your contract anyway. Lazarov, for some reason, has got 13 goals and 5 assists so far this year. I don't know why he's become so good, but I'm not complaining. He is inconsistent, extremely inconsistent still, but it's his best season so far, and I can't complain. Stuart Priest is still improving. He's only a leading player for the regional division at the age of 20 which is concerning. I thought he would do better than this. He apparently can be a National League player in the future. Show some ambition and improve yourself to show that's the case. Tavares does start. He is the deep line playmaker I was hoping would get some time. He's only 15 though, so this could be a bit too early. But at the same time, it's not the end of the world. Now, there's one player that's definitely benefited this season. It is Chris Bell. He is a player that is considered a decent player for this division. I like to think he's going to be a superstar for us because he's only 18. Yes, he's being paid just £25 a week. I have also given him a new contract. So it, it starts at the end of next season. We're at least making sure he's not going to be leaving us anytime soon. James Mitchell is definitely good enough for the division. He's a good player for the division now at the age of 19. He's really good. And I've already looked at Miele. He is good. He's only 16. He is only a regional player right now, but he'd definitely improve. Well, on the bench, we've got Shepard, who hasn't been amazing. I have tried to give him some first-team football, but honestly, I think the centre-back position is our weakness, just generally at this point. And he needs to definitely do better and better. Why he's got that trait, I don't know. But yeah, I probably should do better here. Rimmer is a good player, apparently, but at the same time, I've had issues with him. I've had a load of fights with him over the season so far. And I've dropped him because of his training performances. So, there you go. Williams Morris came for the Kemi last year. Has been decent. Has got six assists. Despite the fact he only started seven times. With 16 substitute appearances. So, he's definitely shown he can be decent. I just don't know how much I could trust him though. I've used Nathan Sather this season a bit. Because I feel like he's one of those players I can start to trust. Even if he's not good enough yet. I think he'll be Bell's replacement if Bell decides to leave us. Which is a bit of a statement to make but i am gonna make it anyway well montel gibson has slowed down again but honestly last year was a one-off fluke you're not gonna get 29 goals a year he's also only started 29 times and hasn't been on the starting that all the time so he's not good enough for the division he's also 30 but he's also got 13 goals he's actually underperformed again but we're still in fifth place so clearly we've got some talent here Either way, that's our start to nine up. We're going to see what we can do. And we're going to hope we can beat Marine. They got a corner now. Inside six minutes, Gordon takes it. And they've scored. Samuel Haslan has scored it. And if we lose in this round again, I will be disappointed. I'm going to say that here now. We missed a corner inside the first minute. They scored a corner inside the six minutes. And it, I think it's hit the defender. I see the defender, isn't it? We are having to be concerned here by their play. They're stretching us a little bit. As Mitchell comes deep as well to defend. But there's Bell. Now, good interception. What can he do? Finds me LA. I think it managed to go off him, actually. But here's James anyway. He's running at the defense. And the wing back on attack plays across to find no one. Lazarov's there. That keeper's made a howler. And Lazarov gets his 80 for the season. That was lucky. Keeper made a clanger. And I feel like our two strikers completely bamboozled the goalkeeper here to get us the goal. This is good. This is really good. James plays across. It bounces. Miola and Mitchell just don't go for it. And they keep us gone for it. And it's completely misjudged it. Free kick now. Mitchell to take. He's our captain, apparently. I just realised. He 
Tells it to Tavares. Tavares finds Bell. He's out, he's not offside. That's a great goal. Set piece of wizardry. We lead 2-1. Chris Bell has given us the lead. I honestly thought Mitchell was going to take the shot, but he didn't. And then fires Tavares instead. And Bell's just so much space. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. Corner. Tavares had take it. Can he find ahead of one of our teammates? No. Penley doesn't get the ball at first, but his priest now. Tavares. Tavares goes for goal. It's his first ever goal. And we've seen it live and in person. Wonderful goal. It means I don't have to show you this later on. But this is great. We're 3-1 up against Marine in the playoffs first round. And if we win this game, we take on Kings Lynn, who we have beaten in the past. But Tavares with a wonderful goal. Doubles our lead. Having been 1-0 down early on, I didn't change anything. I just let the players do their thing. I told Lazar off to ease off his tackles. I told Priest to calm down, but that's all I've done. The players have done this by themselves. And really well done too. Okay, the fact they've got a highlight into the first minute of the second half is not ideal. But here we are. And, oh my god, they would work, but they scored. And it's now 3-2. Okay. I thought we would not be doing this so early. But clearly, they've come out and decided they want to get back into this game. And it is a bit lucky. But what can you do? We're piling under pressure, apparently, which shows you that we are knocking on the door very loudly right now. Bell, James, they play the cross. It's deflected in, and it's Scott to Gibson, who scores anyway. It's 4-2. That should be over. It was deflected on its way in, and it then hit the woodwork on its way in as well. Very good stuff. And Bell's finding James. His cross was actually deflected by the defenders for trying to block it, and then Gibson had to shot which went in off the post. A very good fourth goal, and it's now 4-2 to Telford against Marine. We should be good here. You know, I made my last change. We're sadder on for Bell. They've got a corner, and they've scored with it. Okay, I don't know how Walsall scored this. I told Toussaint and Piggott to not get complacent, and one of us could see the goal. I don't think the other player is involved in this defending, but that is poor. That is absolutely poor. It was a classic apparently, but I'm not happy it was. We do win 4-3 and we're through to the next round of the playoffs. Now we take a King's Lynn. I'll be back for that, which is only in three days time. So we do need to rest up the players, unfortunately. But what can you do? Okay, we're now going to take on King's Lynn Town. They are the team that finished in second. Kedwin take on Altrincham, So we don't know what to expect. I don't think we're going to beat King's Lynn. The fact they want me to go defensive says a lot. However, despite the thing, we're going to go over the same team as last time with one change. Lukman starts on the bench this time because I got frustrated with Vimmer because he decided to be very poor in training and put a 6.45 and then get upset when I told him to improve. Apparently, I've criticized him enough about it. So in my mind, that means, okay, you're dropped for a long time then. I don't want to play you if you're not going to perform in training. It's just how I view things in Football Manager. And I feel like it's the right way to go about it. But that's just me. Would you drop a player for the same reason? Lookman benefits from it though. So here we are. But if we look at our record against Kings Lynn, we've not lost to them since the first season. That's the remarkable thing. We've won against them the last three times. We beat them away from home the last game as well. So we know we can beat this team. The question now is, can we beat them? Let's find out together, shall we? We've got a throw here. If we get ourselves in front, I will be very happy. But James, what a ball win. Shane Lazarov can't get to it. Holmes is quite tall, it looks like. And we're not being amazing so far. I've just encouraged the players to try and do something as we get the ball away. But we're not really being consistent with our possession right now. And that's a shame. Here's Bramble. What can he do? And he plays back to Williams. Back to Tosh, but he plays it forward to Simmons. We get the ball back to Varys, intercepts really well here. Priest now plays the ball forward to Mitchell, but he's lost out to Simmons, who just gets in front of him. But Tavares gets the ball back again. Piggott to play that wide, does so, finds Atkinson. Here's Lazarov, and Lazarov cuts inside. Has to play it back up the pitch to Atkinson now. That's a good ball to Atkinson. Here's Priest now. Priest back to Atkinson. Ball forward to Lazarov. Plays across. Mitchell scores. We lead by goal to nil. That is such a well-worked goal. And this, if we 
Hold on to the lead is enough to take us to a playoff final. What a well-worked move this is. Down the right-hand side, Greece, Atkinson, Lazarov. And the Mitchell just had a tap-in in the end. And he finds the top corner. Really well worked. 1-0. So far, we lead by goals. They actually had an injury before we scored. I've just re I just realized that goalkeeper got injured. That goalkeeper got injured. Shane Rowley got injured. Who did they bring on? Oh my god. We have to take advantage of this. That goalkeeper got injured. We got no keeper on the bench ourselves, but the goalkeeper that got on the bench now is just a 16-year-old kid. Oh my word. Suddenly, the idea that we can shock them doesn't look out of place. Oh my word. I did not realize that was the case. No wonder we suddenly scored those goals. That poor kid had only two minutes to react. Three minutes to react to the first goal. Fair enough. We've got one last sub. They've got a corner. Dixon Pieces on the ball. Fires Forbes. Roberts is now back on the ball. Plays across to Dixon Pieces. They've equalized. Well, we've been the better team for most of this half. And suddenly they've hit us with that. I am going to make a change in response to this. And take Lazaroff off. And bring Williams Morris on. As a highlight, in the 94th minute of the game, last minute of injury time, Williams Morris is hit his back, but he's got the ball anyway, plays it back to Atkinson, back to Williams Morris, and now, can he play a ball in the middle? He has done. Gibson scores! We've won it! We've won it in the 94th minute! We're in the playoff final! We are in the playoff final and knocked out the favourites! Kings Lynn Town! Oh, this is wonderful! I genuinely thought we'd lost a chance, but Williams Morris, with the delightful cross, finds Gibson to get us the winning goal. And for the second game running, Gibson scores, and this time it's the winner. 2-1, we win against Kings Lynn Town. What a victory. Kettering Town. We're taking on Kettering Town in the final. And our previous meetings, we beat them both times. There's no way we're doing this, right? There's no way we're beating Kettering Town. Okay, play our final against Kettering Town. If we win, we're probably going to be battered in the National League and maybe going down. But if we lose, I'm not saying it's the end of the world. I actually think it might be better we lose, but I'm not going to complain if we don't win. But I'm not going to complain if we win either, because let's be honest, I didn't think we would actually be in the playoff final. I thought we'd be knocked up by... Kings Lynn, quite frankly, the fact we've knocked out Kings Lynn is kind of amazing. But there you go. Let's see how we do against Kerry Town in a game I've made one change. And it's on the bench. Yeah, I've replaced Lookman again. Lodge is now on the bench this time. He's actually starting to develop quite nicely. And yes, he's not perfect, but some of the attributes he has are very, very good. He's also wanted by a lot of people. I've also got him a new contract, so he's not going anywhere. They can look elsewhere. We've got a good team out there. We've done well. Penley's gone down to a um, two-star kind of busy player again, but that's fine. I've also dropped Vimmer. I, I might just be sending Vimmer at this point. I am starting to get sick of him. He got 6.85 after 18. And... In the last training thing, I'm just going to show you this because it is infuriating. He got 5.15 average rating in training. Sorry, you don't deserve to be my, in my team if you're going to be that pathetically bad. I don't care who you are. You're not benefiting from this. Okay? I refuse to play a player who's refusing to train properly. So he might be sold. I don't care at this point. Either way, let's see how we do against Kettering Town. A very good team. I also realise I might be upping a load of my wages when we get promoted because 30% of increase in a load of people isn't a lot of money because we've got £1.3 million in the bag. But okay, let's see how we do against Kettering Town. I hope we can win. Okay, they got a free kick. Snowden takes it. And they've immediately scored us like two minutes, but it's offside. <laughs> Raven Hill's goal's been ruled out. Henley's going to be told to ease off his tackles because he's been booked. Tavares is now being booked. I'm going to tell him to ease off his tackles. Penley's taking a free kick, finds Tavares. And the fact that Tavares has been such a big player for me already is good. 
Mitchell finds Bell. Wasn't the best pass, but Bell, what a ball to Lazarov. But he doesn't get there. Allen comes out and intercepts. Really good goalkeeping here. And the ball's been cleared. Tries to find Penley. Uh, well, Penley did get there, but only found his way to Raven Hill. Here's Brown for Kettering Town. Kettering Town lead. We were behind against Marine last time. And I think this is going to be a problem. They're, they're, this is a completed formation. There's a 4 4 2 themselves against our 4 4 2. We lost 5 0 to Gainsborough Town. We lost 5 0 to Gainsborough Trinity, who were due to 4 4 2. This is a 4 4 2, and we've already conceded two goals. One was ruled offside. This was no way going to be ruled out. This could be a bad daily office for us. And now, O'Neill. I think as Hayes say, it's played the ball cross, finds James, unfortunately for them, but Bell can't get that to get the ball back. Here's Waving Hill for them. On the end, ball in the middle again. Tries to find Brown, pick up, gets the ball away, but does it, plays it across. Penley heads the ball away again, and this time we get the ball again. Now Mitchell, having to do a lot of work here, but his pass was not great for Lazaroff. I don't know why he was thinking that would be a good ball when he couldn't do it properly, but okay. Here's Raven Hill, but Atkinson is the set. It's now Priest. Lazaroff now. What can he do? Some of my players have got really good passes on them every now and again. Fires the ball to Mayele. Out wide to Atkinson. Now, what can Atkinson do? Play the ball forward potentially or plays across to Tavares. Ball out wide to Atkinson again. Really good ball. Tavares, Lazaroff can go for goal. Has done. It's in. It's taken a bit of deflection, but it's in either way. 1 1 before half time. And that's his 19th of the season. And suddenly, we are back on level terms. It felt like one of those moves that's going to go our way, but Lazarus shot, it hits the defender the way through, it takes away from the goalkeeper, and we equalise. One word at half time. We had the better chances and the better possession, but I know that doesn't always win us matches. This is a big moment for us, point of view, and I still can't believe we're even in this game, but Higo's been bad. I might take him off in a bit, it's a free kick. Mitchell takes it. Trying to find James. Plays across to Miele. He's at the bar. And I think James was offside. He was. Goal kick or free kick. Allen takes the ball. And plays it forward. But we get the ball now. Pick it. Finds Atkinson. What can Atkinson do here? Finds Priest. Back to Atkinson. And now. We find Priest again. He's making a run forward. Plays it back to Tavares. And now. Atkinson on the ball. Finds Mitchell. Plays it forward to Lazarus, but doesn't get there. Only in intercepts the pass. Back to Allen. And Allen will now lump the ball forward to try and find his teammate or clear it. But he doesn't find anyone. Finds James instead. Now it's Bell. Bell on the left-hand side. Cuts inside. Finds Mitchell. And Mitchell gets tackled. But Bell gets the ball back. Goes for goal. He said the woodwork. The post that denied us now. Oh my goodness. And now they've got a counter attack going. Brown. On the ball, but he's taking too long. Try to find a cross. It's not really gone for them. And Pendley clears it. Another how it starts. James with the throw. Uh, that is not the best throw, but Tavares gets the first anyway. Finds James. His bell. He cuts inside. Can go for goal. Does so. And that's hit the woodwork again. We're on the ball. Get another highlight. Tavares now. I've not seen these many highlights in one in these games at all. Mitchell loses out to Snowden. Here's Zazic. And now, McKenna Zayitz plays it for the Brown, and Reese Brown scores. It's two on Kesselbein Town, his second of the game. And we've not been great today, it must be said, in defending. We've had so many chances to defend and to at least get in front, but we've not taken it. And the one chance we see them get, Brown takes advantage of and scores it. We. I'm going to have to be careful here. they got a throw. If they make it 3-1, it might just be over. And we get the ball back. Tavares now. Back to Gibson. Up to Gibson. Oh, what a pass to Lazarus. That's so much time and space for him. To play across. Has done, but it was not the pass I was looking for. Here's Gibson. Now Sadler. Sadler hits the post. We've hit the post again. Oh, my God. If we keep, if we get these on target, we, 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 we'll be fourth. Two up or something. Six two up. We've not taken our chances today. Oh, it's a frustrating game. And Tucson intercepts the cross. 
Pig is now being booked. I'm going to pause to make that change. That easing for tackles. That's the only person who's rushes. I'll do myself. But Mitchell is on the free kick. I've seen what he can do from these. No, Severo's on the free kick. Sorry. Mitchell's there. I'm marked. Pass it to him. He finds Sadler. Oh, he finds Mitchell anyway. Mitchell. It's, it happened. He was on Mart. I noticed it. I would get the goal anyway. Sadler gets the assist this time. And it's 2 2. Our set pieces are working again. What a game this is. What a playoff final. What a playoff series we're having so far. We are very much fun to watch. We're in extra time. Eight goals scored. Six conceded. If we have to win on penalties, I don't know why I got the penalty takers on the bench. Free kick. Allen takes it, but Gibson has the ball to Mitchell. Mitchell now has to find a pass. Finds Atkinson. I love seeing this team right now. This is a very fun team to watch. Lazarus, Mitchell. We've had to recover from a playoff disappointment two years, three years ago. And that's a chance we could have taken. But Tavares actually doesn't get that. Anderson gets the ball to Eugenia. And now Anderson of the ball. But we get the ball back. Lodge. That's not a good clearance. That is not a good clearance from him. Onukrele scores. It's free. It's 3 2. Oh, that clearance. I think it was. It says to be a clearance, not a pass. Lodge, I thought, would be smarter than that. But he's given the ball away needlessly here. He's done well to intercept it, but he just didn't look. It's like he just helped the, the prey on more than anything else. And their defender or winger, I think he's a winger, just took a fast of the situation and scored. We're tiring, though. Mitchell's definitely tiring. And Ok Rene finds Ochenna. Oh, right now it's their left winger that's got the winning goal for them. And his shears. And oh, dear. Thomas, the fresh leg, Snowden. Out wide to Anderson. This could be four. It is four. I think we're done. I think our tires has caught up to us. The young talent are starting to tire. And it's over as a contest, I think. I'm not changing my mentality. It's worked for us. But the 4-2 defeat now. We beat them twice this year. We've came from behind twice. We're not going to come back from behind for the third time, I don't think. I can't be upset. I cannot be upset. We took them to extra time. We took a team that finished in third place to extra time. We beat a team in second place. And we did ourselves proud. A playoff final. I cannot be upset by this. I didn't think we even get into this playoff final in the first place. But the fact we got here, fair enough. Great performance from our boys. It's just a shame we didn't get anything out of it. And the woodwork saved Kedouin Town so many times. It really did. i just seen our budgets. That's a ridiculous transfer budget for our level. £521,000. But I'm not going to bolster the squad in the way that they think I am. I'm going to bolster the squad in helping our youth recruitment. We've got £1.34 million pounds in the bank right now. That is an insane amount of money for this level. And I'm happy with it because... We're being smart with our budgets. We really are. And this is the end of the season with you. I'm happy with this because we've done really well. This is a good year for our point of view. Even if we lost Remy Walker to FC United, they didn't even get in the playoffs. So I feel justified in that decision now to let him go. Fraser Kerr also left for Kelty Hearts. And we let 11 players go on loan this year. Some which haven't really played, but it is what it is. You can't really fault everyone. Some players... Benefited from it. Cahill especially benefited from it, as did Muzzlewright. So, that's great. Robert Smith also benefited from it. And actually looks quite good now. He's definitely improving a lot. To the point that he might be ready for the first thing next year, which is crazy to say. And Tommy Foster, out on loan, has also benefited from the loan spells. So, clearly, I need to start utilising the loans more often. Because they're helping our players develop. I definitely can't be upset with this season. To get to the playoff final and lose it was beyond my expectations. I thought was I was just looking at a top half finish again. So the fact we got to the playoff final and lost to a team that was so far ahead of us in the league is nothing to be ashamed about. And we were, for the most part, just sticking with the players for the entirety of the season. Even if at times we did have some really bad defeats, we showed what we can hang, and that's great. It really is. FA Cup, we got to Hayden Will to Louisville, who... I think we're in our division, but in the south side, so that's annoying. And in the FA Trophy, Oldham beat us. Never expected to win that, so it's fine. Most remember, the biggest win, 6-2 against Kettering. 
You know, I'd be great if we could have done that in the playoff final, but I guess it's not the end of the world. Matt Sumer with a 4-1 victory is altering him, so that's good. And the goal of the season was scored by Miele. I don't remember this goal. And this is the game we lost against Marine as well. So let's look at this goal. So Williams Morris on the ball. And then Miele. What a ball, actually. That's, I think it's more the pass than anything else. What a pass. I think it's the pass more than the goal that made that goal for us. But okay. I can see why that's goal of the season, potentially. Finances. We're not really making a lot of money. But match day commercial retail. We're looking good. I will say the fact that Hall's one of the top shirt says, and I'm probably going to release him. It's a bit surprising. Maybe not be a bit amazing, but what can you do? We are making good money for way though. And we've doubled our competition prize money. So again, really good to see. The fact that only one of my players in a team that got to a player final got a 7.0 average rating, I think tells you everything about this team that we weren't really about being amazing individually but just really good as a unit. So the fact that as a unit, we were really solid at times, but weren't amazing individually, apart from maybe James, I think it says more about the team than anything else, but it's good that we still did this well, despite not having a great team out there. Acrylase, Kieran James was the player of the season and young player of the season. Miele with the goal of the season. Lazar was the top goal scorer. James was also the most assists. The fact that Lazar was the top goal scorer as the right winger, who's Inversing on the right hand side is interesting. Gibson got the most player in the match awards. James also got the highest average rating, understandably so. He was the only person to get above a seven. Pendy could play the most person for 90. Wimmer got the worst discipline. Oh, yeah, he got sent off twice. I remember this now. We had a game and we went down to nine men. I have not forgiven him for that stupidity he showed in that game. Piggott has now made the most appearances with 261 appearances. Gibson is one goal away from 100 league goals for us. Tavares is the youngest player and the youngest goal scorer for the club now. So that's good. Miele is the fastest goal scorer with 30 seconds into a game. History in the making. Good season. There we go, season. Not upset. And could we look towards a championship? Maybe. But at the same time, I think going for the playoff or top off finish is not something I'll be upset about. We also made 200 games in charge. We did lose 5-1 to Kim Mr. Harris. And the fact we won... Later on against Kings Lynn Town twice. 93rd and 94th minute winners against Kings Lynn Town. They must hate us. They really must hate us. Wow. All right. That's amazing. And the fact Emmanuel Tavares was the youngest ever player for us shows just how much of faith I have in the guy. Okay. So this is the team of the year now, overall best 11. And the fact that we've got a a golden generation start to show Atkinson, James, Priest, Vimmer, Lazarov now also in this. We've still got the 4 3 3 because I started with that. And the fact we've done this well is really promising. We did lose more followers, but we only lost 358 followers. It's not the end of the world. They only want me to avoid relegation. And the board also only want me to avoid relegation. I think that just tells you just how much of a big deal getting to the players really was when we only want to avoid relegation. Let's now talk to the players and tell them that we're going to talk about the league. We're optimistic we can avoid relegation. Yeah, we can stay up. Absolutely we can. I've got no more promises. And I think we're doing okay. Happy days, everyone. Have a good time off. I'll see you for next season. Oh yeah, we compare poorly the other teams in this division. Understandably so. So I'm going to end this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys will like and share this video. And that you subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. Where do you think we're going to face next season? I want to hear thoughts and opinions and all of that down below. But anyway, until next time, goodbye. And well, good night.